Good All morning. right. Yes. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Again, just want to, I'm excited to be with you today. We've got the awesome Andre Wainwright, who's going to be sharing with us what God has laid on his heart. We know it was an ordained word for today. He and I were having a discussion earlier about, um, <clears throat> you know, we had some changes to the schedule just because of uh, someone <clears throat> being under the weather. And uh, I was going to go ahead and, and go today. And, um, but I always listen to hear, you know, what is God, what's this current word for the day? And I just was not getting anything from him. And it was almost as though it's like, you're not going to speak today. So I'm sitting here fumbling around like, Lord, okay, I was going to show up on the call. I don't know what you're going to do. But <laughs> I'm just going to show up. And lo and behold, uh, Dre, who had the same thought yesterday about going ahead and going today, um, texted me this morning and, and said he was ready to go. So we know for sure what he's about to give to us. God had planned specifically for today, but you know, he does that every day. So I'm so excited to be part of this man's team right here. Y'all give it up for our awesome, again, the choir director <laughs> of the Accelerate <laughs> Drive of the Holy Spirit Zoom Church. Yeah. Mr. Andre, right, take it away, sir. Yes. The praise leader, yes, is in the building. Well, great morning, Accelerate Tribe of the Holy Spirit, Zoom Church, my Zoom Box family. Um, I am honored to be in front of you guys. I'm just honored that I got some people that actually want to hear what I have to say. They actually want to hear my voice, hear God speak through me to you guys. Um, but before we begin, before we get into it, um, everybody but Pastor Dons, I see that he's driving right now. Everybody, bow your heads and let's go before the Lord in prayer before we get in here and we eat his word this morning, right? So Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, giving you all the praise and all the glory and honor, Father, that you are doing deserving, Father. We cannot do what we do without you, Father. And so we thank you that you are here in the midst of us, Father. You said where two or more are gathered together in your name, that there you are in the midst of them, Father. So we thank you for being a part of this call. We thank you for being a part of our lives, Father. We thank you that um, you continue to pour into us more and more every single day, Father. We continue to show up because we know that you have more and more in store for us, Father. So I ask that it be all of you and none of me, Father. Continue to be more and more of you, Father, and less and less of me, Father. I thank you for those, Lord. I thank you for your angels that you have dispatched and encamped about those that are afflicted this morning and that are going through things. Uh, we lift up our sister who was supposed to present today, Father, but we know that you have her covered. Um, we know you know exactly who she is, Father. I thank you for being with her as she goes through the, um, to get to the success and the victory that is on the other side of whatever it is that she is battling through, Father. But we thank you that the victory is yours, Lord. So we thank you for the victorious testimony that will be on the other side of it, Father. And as we get into it, Father, I thank you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and my mind, that it be acceptable unto your sight my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise and thank you, Lord, forever and evermore. So as I said, as I said earlier, and as the song said, more and more, we want more and more of God. That is the reason why we continue to show up. That's the reason why we continue to gather together Monday through Thursday and and we go back and we listen to the replays on Friday and, you know, we, we get through the weekend just with anticipation and expectation for what Monday of the next week and of the next week and of the next week after that continues to hold in store for us for, you know, our, our weekly, our daily, our weekly bread, right? So, you know, we continue to show up expecting more. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to go to, you know, every songwriter's best scriptures in the Bible. We are going to go to the Psalms and we're going to start in Psalms chapter 68, verse 19. And when the church gets there, please say amen. We're going to start in the King James version today. I know that's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a curveball. We're going to start in the King James Version. I like what the King James Version says, and then we're going to go to the Amplified in the same, the same verse, right? 
So, verse 19 says, bless. Okay, my bad. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, right? So, blessed be the Lord, blessed be our God who daily loads us with benefits, right? So, I don't know about you guys, but here where we are in the state of Georgia, today is the first day of school. So I watched my my 15 year old, my twin. Um, she began her first day of 10th grade today. And, you know, the first day of school is, is, is big. You know, it's, it's, it was big for me. It's big in our household. And, you know, you can't sleep the night before you wake up, mm -hmm. you know, you got to do your hair and you know, you got to get your outfit ready. You know, it, it's it's a it's a big spectacle. It's 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 a huge deal, right? And so, when my daughter came downstairs to prepare for school, I was sitting at the table, sitting at the kitchen table where her her brand new book bag is. So she come down, she fresh, got a brand new shoe. You know, I only got the shoes tied. She had to put the laces in the shoes. They just that new. So she comes down, she gets her backpack, and uh, she's just loading it with all these things that she knows she's going to need for the day, right? And it, it made me think about this scripture. And it made me think about every single year leading up to this year. Every day, every school every school day, even if, if she starts the night before, every day she loads this backpack with all the things that she's going to need for the day. Um, you know, and just pencils, you know, pen, and then, you know, the most important device, the, the cell phone and the charger, because, you know, you ain't got to make sure the phone stays charged at school. You know, that, that's, that's the most important thing. And, you know, got to take first day of school pictures and all that good stuff, right? So, you know, loading her backpack with daily benefits and, and a side note, I don't know if anybody uh, is a fan of the Jumanji, um, uh, you know, franchise, but there's a, there's a character in this movie played by a, a comedian who's very short in stature. Um, but in this particular movie, he is the backpack guy. So everything that the star of this movie needs is loaded in this backpack. So, you know, need a boomerang, got a boomerang. Need a boom box, got a boom box. So I just think about this scripture, you know, I, you know, I'm, I, I take things, I'm, I'm a visual guy. So loading it with data benefits. So let's, let's look at that in the Amplified version, shall we? We're going to go to the Amplified, the AMP, Andre's most powerful version. That's what the Amplified means to me. So verse 19, same scripture, same, uh, same book, Psalm 68, verse 19. It says, blessed be the Lord who bears our burden day by day, the God who is our salvation, Selah, meaning pause and, and calmly think about that. So the God who gives us daily benefits also bears our burden, right? So we show up every day, every day to the Accelerate Tribe. And when we get off of, get offline and we go about our days, we show up, right? We show up with, with the joy of the Lord, with the Lord on the inside of us. And, and no matter what our day brings or what, you know, what is in store, we do our best, right, to, to, to exude Christ, right, to, to be like Christ in this world. And, um, you know, some days are easier than others. Some days a little harder than others, right? But that's why we continue to show up. And that's why verse, you know, verse 19 in, in Psalm 68 says, every day he loads us with daily benefits. Every day he bears our burden, right? Because when we go out in our day or when our children go to school and they empty their backpacks and they go through their periods of school, they go through their daily life, they're going to empty that backpack. And then they're going to come home or like us, we're going to empty our backpack when we go out in this world. And then we're going to come back and we're going to need some more daily benefits because we don't know what tomorrow, you know, what tomorrow has in store. But we know that we need those daily benefits from the Lord to get through whatever it is that we're going through in this life or, or not even just to get through to share what we are learning here and are learning with our own personal time with God to share it with other people when we go out, right? Our daily benefits, our daily book bag, right? So let's stay in Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. All right, there we go. Psalms chapter 100. And then we're going to go to verse five. And this was actually um, a lyric in the song that we just heard. 
Um, and we're gonna kind of, we're gonna read this and gonna come back to it a, a couple times within the day, right? So Psalm 100, verse five, it says, for the Lord is good. His, and this is amplified. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. So for the Lord is good. His mercy and his loving kindness are everlasting. They never run out. So no matter what it is that we face, no matter what it is that we go through, we have to remember the Lord is good. And his love, his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. They, ne they, they don't run out. It endures forever, right? So I, I love that it, that we have, I love that we have this accessibility to his word because we have to be reminded every day that the Lord is good and his mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. They endure forever. And he never changes. And, and he is exactly who he says he is all the time. And sometimes we may be faced with situations that make us question that, that make us uh, waver from that. But we have to be reminded that the Lord is good. His loving kindness and his mercy endure for all generations. His love never fails, right? So let's talk about some of God's promises. So when I was, when I was, I was talking to Jacinta this morning and uh, I've been awake for a, a few hours this, this morning. I've been up for a little while. You know, when God wants to get you to do something, he's going to get you to do something. So I don't know, maybe because, you know, maybe it was first day of school with Jitters. I don't know. But, you know, I was up. I was excited. You know, so I got up and there were there were three promises that he showed me. These are not an exhaustive. I like the way Jacinta says this is not an exhaustive list of promises. But these are just the three that he gave me, the three that I'm going to, uh, I guess, use for this message today. Right. So. Promise number one, Hebrews chapter 13. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 13, verse four and five. Excuse me. Right, so it says, I don't know if I want to start with. Four. Hold on, give me just a second here, guys. Oh, actually, okay. So it's not four, five. We're going to start with five. Five and six. There we go. I don't know why I got four written down. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Moving too fast. <laughs> All right. Hebrews 13, chapter 5. I mean, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. In the Amplified. So it says, let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money, shun greed, be financially ethical. There's another version that says, get you a financial advisor somebody that is fully securities licensed. But we, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about that in another, an, another time, right? Being content with what you have, for he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you Assuredly not. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently say, The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Right. So, promise number one that God told me this morning that He will never leave us, nor will He ever forsake us. There will be times in our lives, and some of us have already gone through it, some of us maybe are going through it now, but there will be times in our lives where we feel like we're on an island by ourselves, where we feel like nobody hears us, nobody's listening, nobody cares. But our God reminds us in this scripture that he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. And if we keep that in our mind, we can persevere, we can get through, right? All right, promise number two, we're going to go back to the Old Testament. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, 
verse 24. This is also in the Amplified. Proverbs 18, 24. And it is no coincidence and it is no mistake that I call you lovely people on the screen in front of me, my Zoombox family, because you guys are more than just friends to me. You guys are my family. And those who are listening to this, um, you guys are our family as well. And we appreciate you having our, our being a part of the family, right? So verse 24 says, the man of too many friends chosen indiscriminately will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother. Um, you know, I, I tell my children all the time, you know, I don't, I don't have any friends, you know, you know, my circle is so, so small, it's like, a, it's like a period, right? And you know, okay, you know, that's true. I don't really have a lot of friends. Um, I have family members and I have clients. Um, and some of my clients have become family members, um, you know, but when I, when, I call, when I call a person my family, when I tell a person that, I, that, that you are my family and I love you, I mean that, you know, because like the scripture says, you know, the man of too many friends chosen indiscriminately, you know, will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. So, you know, my 15 year old that I was referencing earlier, my twin, you know, uh, she has never met a stranger. Yeah, this, this, this little girl here, you know, and I don't know who she gets from, you know, I don't know which one of her parents this comes from, but this 15 year old of mine, she can meet somebody one time. And in that interaction, she, you know, her, her heart is just so, is, she's got the biggest heart I have ever met. And a lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll leave somebody's presence and, you know, we'll, we'll be together, just the, the family and my, my daughter will say things like, Man, you know, I, that's my best friend. Man, I just, I, I can't wait to see them again. That's, that's my best friend. And we'll ask, like, you know, okay, well, you know, well, well who are they? Oh, no, but I just, man, that's my best friend. I love them. You know, I just can't wait to see them. I said, what's their last name? I don't even know their first name, but that's my best friend. You know, so we we have to remind our, our child. You know, that's what parents, you know, that's that's one of the, the, the lessons in the parent manual that nobody ever gets when they be, you know, become parents that you have to, you know, you have to show your children, you have to teach your kids, hey, you, you can't not, you can't necessarily just be so accepting of everybody. Now, you're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to love everybody. You might not like everything they do, but you are supposed to love, but they, not everybody can be your best friend, you know, so, and, and she's learning that lesson. She's learning it as she goes through life, and we're here to to help her, you know, help her get through it and buffer those things. But, you know, we, we do remind her that there is a true loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother, no matter how many mistakes we may have made, no matter how many times we've missed a mark, no matter, you know, procrastination, you know, what, you know, lack of determinant, whatever it is, there is a friend who we call father, who is closer to us than a brother who will love us in spite of, who will love us because of, who loves us just because we are and are becoming, as we heard yesterday. And because of those things, he is closer to, to us than a brother. We can call on him at any time of the day or night, and he will be right there to comfort us, to get us through, to be with us at, 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 our, at whatever moment we need him to be there, right? And so, Moving on, promise number three, right? So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, back in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 through 13. And this is also in the New Testament. And this particular scripture, uh, so I've heard this scripture before, but most of the time when I've heard this scripture, well, let me read it first and then we'll, we'll go into that. So verse 12. Therefore, let the one who thinks he stands firm, immune to temptation, being overconfident and self-righteous, take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation. Verse 13, no temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. 
but God is faithful to his word. He is compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist, but along with the temptation he has in the past and is now and will always provide the way out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy. So in my, my short time of being in the church, because um, I didn't grow up in church and that's okay. I don't, I don't use that as an excuse and I don't use that as, you know, as a reason, you know, for me to just be out here acting all crazy. But most of the times when I've heard that particular scripture, that particular scripture is referenced for a particular sin, a certain sin. Um, but when I read that scripture, it, it hits me a little differently, you know, where it says, you know, um, no temptation, no temptation, regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to the human experience, right? And so, you know, the scripture also said that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? And I, I know this in the Bible, I just don't have the scripture on the top of my head, but um, he, he, he's referencing temptations. He's, rep he's referencing things that we will face in our life that he has he has given us a way of escape. He won't put he won't put more on us than we can bear, right? And because he he won't put more on us that, than we can bear, that lets me know he knows our level of strength. And our and you know, just like a bodybuilder or somebody that exercises or, or works out, your strength today may not be your strength tomorrow. You may be stronger tomorrow than you were today, and vice versa. And so you know, when, I, when I've heard that scripture, usually referenced for one particular sin, but then when I read it, studying to show myself approved, and when I read the scripture, I see that he's not just talking about one particular thing. He's talking about the temptation of, of doing things outside of his will, right? And so, you know, Mich Sister Michelle, Sister Michelle Thomas had asked us a question last week when she presented, um, and I'm paraphrasing, I believe her, her question was, you know, do we think that she's being transparent versus, she, she used the word, but anyway, so believe it or not, you know, this is vulnerable. vulnerable. There you go. Vulnerable, vulnerability and trans and uh, transparency. And so, that hit me because, you know, when she was talking about it, she was smiling. I, I made mention of like, you know, I, I'd never I had never seen that from her. Right. And so most of the time when I tell people this about Brother Dre, the praise leader, you know, Mr. Smile a lot, they don't really believe it. So, you know, believe it or not, I often battle and I've gotten a lot stronger but I often battle with extreme and like excessive mood swings, right? Um, and the temptation, a lot of times in those things, the temptation that I have is for me to just park and live right there when, but with the ups and downs, depression and, and anger and, you know, all these different things. And, you know, Sometimes I mask it really well. Sometimes I don't. You know, there was there was a uh, we had a convention uh, for those that are in business with us. We had a convention uh, in 2022, I believe, at the uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium, and there were some people there who are on the call now that, if they think back, they can remember like, yeah, man, you know, Dre really wasn't he wasn't really talking and wasn't really you know. His his jovial self. Well, that was one of my moments. That was one of my moments where you know I was taking everything in and had a bunch of different emotions, and I didn't know how to deal with them. And you know, me, much like mostly everybody else, not just on the call, but everybody in, in this world, we have backpacks, we have baggage, we have things that we carry around with us, and a lot of times, you know. We'll forget that we're wearing that backpack sometimes. We'll forget that, that we're wearing that baggage and it'll cause us to be tempted to take our mind off of 
the, the strength that God has given us, the outlets that God has given us. And so a lot of times we're tempted to park in places that we know we shouldn't be parked at, park in parking spots and locations that we don't need to be at anymore. And it doesn't have to just be one particular sin that that scripture is typically used for in churches everywhere. That can be a lot of different things. I, you know, I'm tempted a lot to just park and use things from this backpack that I'm wearing that happened years ago, decades ago. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll wear that stuff. And then I have to remind myself, okay, all right, the Lord is good. And his love and kindness and mercy endures forever. I don't have to wear this. I don't have to be here anymore, right? But as a coping mechanism, because like I said, me, much like everybody else in this world, we have baggage. And me, much like everybody in this world, sometimes we're strong enough. Some, some days we're strong enough to overcome it. And some days we'd rather just pull that car right in that parking lot and sit right there until something or someone or that friend that's closer to us than a brother screams as loud as he possibly can in our ears and tells us, hey, you got gas in your tank. You can put the car in reverse and you can drive off and I can, I can take you somewhere. I can show you where you actually need to be so that way you can not only help yourself, you can help others with the gifts that I've given you, the gifts that I've put inside of you, the testimonies that I've put on, put inside, the, the things that I've helped you overcome, you can help somebody else overcome, you know? So, you know, I've, I've had, you know, I've had doctors, you know, tell me that I should probably go talk to people and, you know, and, and maybe one day, I don't know, but this is my therapy, you know, you sitting, sitting on these calls with you guys and, even on the days where I don't say anything, or even in the days where I'm, you know, in another room, you know, cutting hair or studying or doing whatever else, you know, you guys, my Zoom box family, you know, you guys are the reason why I keep showing up, you know, the God that is within you. And, and you know, most of y'all, I can't see anything like from your neck up, but that's all I need because that, that is enough. God is showing me, hey, there are people who love you. There are people who I have given you who may not share the same blood as you, who I, these are your family. And as, as Crystal, you know, well, her plant-based self, my favorite, favorite plant-based individual, she'll tell us this is our, this is our safe space, right? And I really believe that. You know, I, I, I told people, you know, when, um, when my wife first sat down on these calls, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't around, not that I wasn't around, I wasn't involved, you know, I wasn't, not that I had anything against, you know, God or anything like that, I was just doing other things, but then I would see, you know, the one thing I, I told y'all, like, why is she always crying, every time I come down, she crying, you know, and I know that 2020 was hard for, for our family, and it was hard for a lot of families, but you know, I remember, I remember one particular call, and I don't remember what, what was being talked about, but I just remember hearing Pastor Don say to my wife, um, you know, very, very inspiring things, and then he prayed for her. I said, oh, okay, well, man, I need to sit down. Maybe I need to put my car in reverse and park right here where this is and get to know these people, get the, you know, because these people are you know, for no other particular reason other than they just love my wife. They, they want to see my wife, um, be, be well, be better, be in good health and, and get, and get, you know, continue to push forward, continue to move forward. Right. And so I would, I would sit down and I think at the time you, you all were, I think maybe in the middle of outwitting the devil the very first time. And so I would sit down and I would, I would listen and like, okay, all right, this is good. This is all right. Then I met some of you guys at a, uh, a fast start school for our particular uh, corporation uh, in Tennessee, found out that Lakita is one of the tallest people in the uh, organization. Um, 
And then I found out that a lot of you guys were like actually real people. Like you guys weren't just like make up people, you know, in Zoom boxes. And so that was cool. And, you know, I remember, I remember how I was at that particular school. I was pretty, you know, quiet, reserved. Some people might've said I was standoffish, but I, I just didn't know. That was a coping mechanism of mine. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, you know, coming in with extra baggage that I should have left in the car. Um, but I just wasn't sure, you know, um, you know, brother been through a lot, you know, a lot of some of the stuff I put myself through, but, but God, God is faithful. Love endures, mercy and, and kindness endure for all generations, right? So, you know, I thank God that, you know, with the temptation that I have personally, since I'm speaking, the temptation that I have to allow my emotions to get the best of me from time to time, that I don't have to live there and that I can bear it. I can bear whatever comes my way because I know that God is, is, is faithful. The God that I serve is stronger than anything I will ever go through. And if I, if I continue to remember that, if I continue to walk in his direction, him leading my steps and, and guiding my path, that I can be, I can do this. I, I, can, I can be great. And all the things that he has in store for me, I can actually attain. Um, but I will not be able to attain it without him. I would not be able to get through and go through any of the things that I get through and go through without him. Because if it was up to me, I would have parked my car where I parked it and left it right there, right? So I know I'm kind of going all over the place. So um, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. I believe the last time I was before you awesome people, I shared this with you. This particular scripture, this this scripture um, is pretty popular, um, but it is very, very, is very, very poignant and helpful for me in my journey, my walk with with Christ and my walk on this earth. Right. So second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine, amplified version. It says, but he has said to me. My grace is sufficient for you. And I don't know if all y'all remember the last time I brought that up, but I Googled, I got on my Sheldon Cunningham and I Googled the word sufficient. And the definition that I got for sufficient, I don't, does anybody remember the definition of the word sufficient? Enough. My grace is enough. And so... When I read that, I was like, man, I'm waiting. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there on the edge of my seat. I'm waiting for this long, lengthy definition. You know, I thought I, you know, had to, you know, get myself prepared. And it was it was one word. My grace is enough. No matter what it is that you face, no matter what it is that you see, God's grace is enough. You know. Stuff might hurt, you know, stuff might not go the way you want it, might not be your timing. Might not be the way you want to see it. Might not have happened. All these different things. God just says, it's enough. My grace is enough, right? My loving kindness is that word again. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Oh, man, you multiply, multiplication. My grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Always available, regardless of the situation. No matter what it is, God is always available, regardless of the situation. You got questions, he's got answers. You've got, you know, you've got whatever. He's got answers. Talk to me. Talk to him. That's what he's saying. He's, he's saying, talk to me. I want you to talk to me. You know, I, I tell my family this all the time. You know, a lot of times people be like, yeah, man, I thought Dre and maybe Dre and. I don't know. Just ask me. Just, I'm an open book. Just ask me. You got questions? I'll give you an answer. That's what God is saying. You got questions? I, I'll give you an answer, even if it's the answer that you might not want to hear, even if it's not an, even if it's the answer might hurt. But just ask me, because my He's saying my grace is enough for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Always available, regardless of the situation, right? For my power is being perfected and is completed 
and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. I was going to read verse 10. Some days, verse 10 is my testimony. And some days, verse 10, I don't know if I'm ready to read it, God. But you know what? Because I got my Zoom box found. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 10 for y'all. So I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, and with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. Ooh, some days I'm verse 10, some days I'm just verse 9. I'm just being honest. I'm just being transparent. Some days I can say, man, you know, ain't God is, man, my weakness, man, I boast in my weakness. Hallelujah. Some days I just close the book after verse nine, say I'm going to get better tomorrow, you know, but it doesn't change God, right? It doesn't change the God that he is. It doesn't change the God that we serve because whether we read verse 10 or not, whether we read verse nine or not, whether we say, ah, I just don't know if I want to get in the word today. It's not going to change who God is. God is saying, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. My word is never going to change. I'm going to be God, regardless of whatever it is going on in anybody's life. And if you got questions, well, I got answers. You got concerns, well, let me, let me help you with those concerns. I'm, he's still God, and I'm going to help you. We're going we're gonna to get through all these things that you're going through. Just let me help you, right? So his strength is made perfect in my weakness. One thing that I, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to admit weaknesses, right? Uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm not the strongest person. And I'm not the strongest Christian. I'm not the strongest brother. I'm not the strongest father. With my, with my camera. There we go. I'm not the strongest husband and I'm not the strongest son. And that's okay because I don't have to be, right? Because as my God tells me every single day I read this scripture, that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. So I don't have to be strong every day. You know, I'm not really that big. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not like Tony DeVos big, right? So, you know, he's pretty, he, he probably stronger than me. Then, then, you know, he probably lift more things than I can, you know. My team lifts more trophies than his team, but they will talk about that another time. Hopefully he hears this. Hopefully he listens to this. Roll tide. But, you know, I don't have to be strong all the time, you know, and, and that's hard. Like, that can be hard for, for me, for a guy. You know, you want to be strong all the time. You know, I, I, I grew up in a house with a mom and two sisters. Now I live in a house with a wife and two daughters. So all I know is being raised or raising women, young ladies. And, you know, when, when I was growing up, so I have an uncle who, who played professional football. He's a Hall of Famer with the National Football League, one of the NFL greatest 100 players. Uh, and he, too, played at the college that is the greatest college football program. And we'll talk about that later. And um, so. He would always, he would always tell me, because I'm the oldest. So on my mom's side of the family, I'm the oldest boy. I'm the, I'm the oldest grandson. I'm the oldest nephew. I'm the oldest of three kids. I have two younger sisters. So I'm the oldest, right? So I was the, I was the standard. So I had to be macho. I had to be this guy. I had to be strong all the time. And so, you know, I couldn't cry. You know, or, you know, I, I you know, I had to go outside and pressure wash apartment buildings at 12, getting blown all over the place because I didn't understand the power of a pressure washing, right? So, you know, I had to be strong. So as I go through life, that's all, you know, I remember those things. I got to be strong all the time. Oh, you can't cry. Oh, you, you know, you, you know, toughen up. You know, don't, don't be like that. You know, be, be the macho man. You know, all these different things. And, you know, you, you, you hold on to those things. So when you're faced with situations where, you know, you feel like, dang, I don't know if I can do this. I, I, I need some help. You know, you, you kind of, you don't want to ask for it because you're so trained. We're so trained 
you know, usually us melanated, you know, males are trained to be strong. We got to be the strongest people in the world. We got to lift everybody up and, you know, that, that's it. You know, so I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful that I, I, I have this word and I have people, you know, other examples, not, you know, my, I love my uncle and I'm, I'm grateful for what he instilled in me. It, it helped me. But I'm also grateful for the other people in my life, the other males, especially in my life, that showed me, hey, man, you don't have to be this. You don't you don't have to be strong all the time. You know, there's somebody who whose strength is made perfect in your weakness. So you don't have to be strong. Let him be strong with you. Let him be strong for you. Right. Let him be strong in you. You know, so, you know, if you ever you know need to take a break, hey. God is still God and he gonna he got it. Matter of fact, he got it if, even if you're strong. Let him have it, right? So um, you know, I'm I'm able to I'm able to show up every day because of this scripture. I'm, I'm able to show up every day because of you know knowing that I don't have to be, I don't have to be the incredible hawk. I don't have to hawk smash all the time. I can just, you know, I can be Tatiana and Alexis's dad, I can be Jessica's husband, I can be you know, Albert and that's the leader's son, to me, Kintosh's brother, you know, you know, uncle to all my nephews and, and my niece. I, I can just be, I can just be that guy and let God do the rest, right? So, you know, we go back to the beginning scripture, Psalm 100, verse five. You know, when, when you go back to the original scripture, you know what that means, right? That means we're getting ready to close. <laughs> Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. So whether you're strong or weak, whether you're male or female, whether you are whatever you are, his love, his Lord, the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. We show up because we want more of God. That's why we're here. That's why we take time out of our day, Monday through Thursday, to, to listen to one another, to learn from one another, and most importantly, to be in the presence of God with one another. And that's why we're here. That's why I'm so grateful for this opportunity. You know, as long as there's breath in my body and the sun continues to set and rise and I'm, and I'm here and I'm able to witness it, I know just like my daughter this morning, she got ready to go to school and she loaded that backpack up. And like the comedian in that movie I referenced earlier, the backpack guy, they know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I have everything I need for today. I have everything I need for today. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Try not to think about yesterday. But for today, I have everything I need. And I'm reminded of that when I get in this word, when I spend time with you guys, when I spend time with God. And as long as I have those daily benefits to continue to fight the good fight of faith, I'm going to keep fighting. So thank you guys. We are here for more and more and more of the Lord. And I hope that the words that he brought forth from my mouth blessed at least somebody and helped somebody. And as we go out and be great in this world and be great to each other, let God be your strength and let God be the more and more that people see when they see you. Love you guys. Amen. Go, Trey. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to give some other people a chance to say something before I do. Anybody have anything they would like to do? <laughs> Lakita beat Don. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Miss Rhonda beat me. So look at us. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Um, I can't see the hands. Uh, so, Lakita, I'm going to ask you to uh, mediate that. <laughs> okay. Miss Rogers first, <laughs> and then I was second. Okay. No. <laughs> then <All Mr>. right. <laughs>
Let's see. I'm going to remove the spotlight so you can see everybody. Miss Rhonda, was you going to go ahead and go? Actually, I was just clapping. Oh, okay. It almost looked like a hand raise. I, I do have a question. How tall are you? Because you keep saying you're very tall. <laughs> Six foot. I'm telling you, it's, that is it. <laughs> but um, apparently... No, she's actually 6'2". <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I was on the uh, program when I uh, was playing ball. You know, you always give them about two, three inches. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dre, praise God. One thing I want to say, every time you speak, oh, you just make me laugh. You know, it's just, I'm always just cracking up. And I wrote down, you have this, um, this gift of a pastor, the way you deliver the word. I feel like I'm sitting before a pastor because um, you're a teacher, right? And then I also feel like a comedian. Good comedians know how to start one joke at the beginning and all through, you know, the um, story, it's like a story and they always hit those in the middle and at the end. And I'm like, how, how do they do that? And I always feel like that's you. Um, but what I want to tell you is when I say God is good, when I say I am in this space and I'm, this space is, has been a difficult <laughs> space. And um, when I tell you, I'm, I love that we did our prayer blitz because I'm always um, in the word with my God. But when I tell you guys, um, word is living. And you you said, um, ask them anything, talk to them. And I mean, I've been asking some things. And I asked some things in this morning's prayer, Dre. And as soon as you said three promises and you read those words, it was the spirit of the living God speaking to me. And when I tell you clear as day what I needed, never in this part of the journey would I ever think that I would think of some of the things that, that the enemy has tried to put in and how so quick God roots it out. And so it's so necessary for being in this space being where God wants you to be and being anchored because I, 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 I'm being vulnerable right now. I never thought that Lakita would ever, ever think of being a space, but God is so good. So then you said, I am not the strongest. And that has always been something that I've always, I'm always this overachiever, even when I try to give it back. But that's our vulnerability, right? And um, there's so much going on, but then there's, I'm crying, I'm talking about these, this space and this feeling, but then there's this peace. And I think that's what gets so, what God makes me see on showing up. If I'm feeling this way with how the enemy tries to hit me and how so true God is and how he lives in me and I know that he's here, I can't give up because this feeling of when it's moments that I can't go to verse 10, <laughs> you said it, it was like, that's it. Sometimes there are days I can live in verse 10 and then there's days I'm shut it down, stay at nine. And I've been wanting to stay at nine, right? But with all of this, God lets me know he's real. He's real and the enemy is real. And I do not want to stop and park. Even though sometimes in my will, I want to stop and park. And you read the last one. Um, and that's when you go into verse 10 and um, I've done switched over to Psalms 105, but it's not my will, you know, when I'm weak in my strength, it's him. So thank you. I thank you for being so obedient because when I tell you God makes no mistakes and I feel the same way about this box and I'm, I'm your baby girl no, no stranger, but man, when God, you know, um, 
I, I have, I've shifted to family, you know, because when you got a lot of friends, man, and, and God has shifted circles over my time, and that's, it has changed to family. So thank you. Um, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like now I'm rambling, but I did mention everything that I wanted to say. Um, so I receive it. Mm, I receive it. Amen. All right. So it's Mr. Dind and Crystal. <laughs> All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I was going to yield over to Crystal, but because uh, I didn't put my hand up, but I started talking. So Crystal, that's why I'm talking right now. But anyway, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Pastor Dre, man, you, brother, you, you are absolute blessing, absolute blessing. And, you know, as you went through the, the, the scripture and, and again, reminding us of uh, his grace is enough. Man, I tell you what, that that was that just blessed me to to no end. But and and then the I mean, just like Lakita was just saying about you talking about verse ten, um, you know, I, I I guess I was really looking at that one totally different. But anyway, but as you presented it, I'm going wow. Then I I I looked I looked at it in the message Bible, and if you all would permit me to read it, uh, this is. You know, after God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient, okay? And then Paul says, once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift, meaning where, where you are, who you are, whose you are. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer, these limitations that cut me down the size, abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks, I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. I mean, we get, we get to see God do some tremendous things in our weaknesses, we see God do some awesome things, even though we may not feel like, as if we're up to it or that we can do it. But when we give it to the Lord, when we trust him, God is going to see us. Uh, he's going to see us through. And when we have that now as, as a, a, a foundation or a new revelation, you know, we, 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 we will get the job done because God is with us. His grace is, he knows our weaknesses. He knows our situation. He knows all about it. And when we come to realize that he knows all about it, now we can, now we can relax, give it to him and have Holy Spirit just lead us, guide us and direct us because victory is ours. Victory is ours as we trust God. So Brother Dre, man, I tell you what, you you are a blessing. I just thank God, Hallelujah, for you and 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 Stacy, you know. And uh, let's see who else. I don't see any other man on the on the call today, but I tell you what, I'm glad you are here. Amen. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory. Now, I'm not saying anything or putting down the, the ladies because y'all are awesome. Y'all know y'all awesome. Every last one of you, y'all are awesome. But it, it it just makes me feel good. When I see a brother, there's something about a brother. All right. Praise the Lord. That's all I got to say about that, at least for right now. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Miss Crystal. Uh, well, to kind of piggyback on, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. To kind of piggyback on Don, you know, there is something about a brother. You know, no doubt. Us sisters can agree to that, that there is something mm -hmm. about a brother. But anyway, let me move on. <laughs> um Dre, my my plant-based brother. <laughs> um, I just have to have to say, I was really touched. I don't know why I was so moved today by your presentation, but you know, I had to reach for my Kleenex. You know, you know, they're always nearby. <laughs> um, but there are a couple of things that you said. Um when you spoke about God's power shows itself in our weaknesses. And that's such a profound statement. 
and a thought. You know, that there's power in weakness. And I will never thought of it that, that way, you know, because I guess for most of us, you know, when you recognize a weakness in yourself, you kind of beat yourself up about it, you know, but God's grace being sufficient is how we overcome how we can. We have that um, passageway to overcoming weaknesses in our lives or, or anything for that matter. The other thing that um, kind of struck me, and I'm going to share a, a little personal stuff with you guys. And I, I may have done this before, but um, as, as I mentioned, I have these triplets and I'm, I'm their godmother. And one of them is a boy. And, um, you know, his household is very similar to Dre's household. You know, a mother with two girls and a boy. And so, you know, the mom was having some challenges with the boy and I was trying to, you know, cause I'm very much involved with them, maybe too much sometimes, um, trying to figure out what we could do to help him being in that environment with all the females. And one day I was, you know, looking at these squares of people and, you know, all I can really see is, you know, from the neck up. <laughs> and I looked at Dre and I said, man, he looks like what that boy might look like as a man. And, it, and it's really the truth. If you see this child and you look at Dre and say, wow, you know? So I, you know, so I asked Dre if he would mentor him and he agreed to do that. You know, now that in itself says something about who the man that Dre is. Because you don't trust your children to everybody, to anybody. You know, so I just wanted to share, share that with you guys. But the, the, the words that came up uh, in my mind and in my heart as I'm listening to Dre was, what defines a man? And Dre here is a perfect example of what defines a man. And I'm proud of you, brother. I just wanted to tell you that. Man. Thank you, mm -hmm. well, get, my, get this Kleenex mother look close. I ain't saying I'm gonna cry. I'm just saying just in case. <laughs> Go ahead, Stacy. All right, Dr. Dre, my brother. <laughs> I can say that, my brother. Hey, I I've got two brothers, one six years old, one four years younger, but I'm the strongest. Stay strong. And I've just adopted you as my brother, if you'll accept, okay? So now you have a brother, okay? Thank I'm you, my just... brother. Accept it. I accept it. Thank you. And thank you for saying happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me last month. Yes, and one sir. of the things said, Dre, is uh, we show up. We keep showing up. And I'm in that same boat where I need this. When we go days without it, you know, we get kind of lonely, you know, but we need the encouragement. All of us on here needs the encouragement, you know, and I, and I know you were saying that there are times when you want to leave the car parked, just park it right there and leave it right there. And I, and I like that. You said, put the car in reverse and drive off, you know, and if it's not bad enough, put the car and drive and drive over whatever it is that that's coming to you. Okay. All of the no's, the rejections, the cancellations, the quitters, put the car in reverse and drive off. Don't let that car park right there. That's talking to all of us, okay? Uh, there's a song way back in the day says, burn rubber on me. Anybody remember that? <laughs> yep, burn rubber on me. So, hey, don't park the car. Put it in drive, put it in reverse, pick it up, move it from one side to the other, but keep going. Right. Don't quit. We're here for a reason. Coach Steph tells me that all the time, that we are here for a reason. So don't give up. Let's keep going, guys. I appreciate it. Amen. Hey, uh, Stacy, could you, Stacey, could you uh, say a couple of tunes <laughs> of that song? Because I have no idea what that song is. <laughs> Come on, Pastor Don. You know you know that song. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't. What? Let me pull it up. I don't remember the words. Let me pull it up, okay? All right. Play a couple of chords there, uh, Dre. Listen, listen. I I don't know if y'all heard it, but I just heard. I just heard a different man, Stacy. I just heard a different man. I, I you are, you know, and and I say that as we have been talking about this transformation, it's like you shed one layer layer of skin. You shed one of those layers of that of that skin. I heard a new person today. I hope hmm. you recognize that about yourself. Praise Lord. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And Dre, man, <laughs> I know why God said, be quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's interesting is I also there was a few things that he said to me and I also understand I understand why because there was a couple of things that he said to me this morning and I was like but you know Lord I'm not going to be able to fill the time with all of this with this right here you know and um, but there was a couple of things that he did say and now I know why um, he said I'm going to ask you to he said to let them know that I'm going to ask them to leave some things behind I'm going to ask you to leave some things behind. Um, meaning, and you were talking about the backpack, you were talking about being parked, you know, in a particular place. And that's what he was, he was saying. He's like, for us to continue this transformative process, I'm going to ask you to leave some things behind. And, you know, when, when the, 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 the caterpillar, he most of them shed their skin five times at you know around four to five times and it said that every time they shed that what the skin that they shed they actually eat it okay what they had been through becomes this nourishing thing for them that now it doesn't exist anymore outside of themselves but it was used as something to take them to the next level. And so as God continues to pull us forward and he says to you, hey, you don't need that, you know, cause we put our own stuff in those backpacks and then we're trying to, you know, he can only shove in so much of those daily benefits if we leave him room, right? And so he, there are things we got to take out of there that we can use as our experience. We can use as the things that helped us get to where we are, but they're not necessary to cover us anymore. They're not necessary to hold, they can't even contain us anymore. And I believe that he is, um, he's, he's, he's taking us to this place, y'all. Uh, he's, he's bringing you to a point, you know, when you go back and you look, and I, I don't mean to keep going, going forward, but I understand what God was doing this morning. Um, you know, when you, when, when, uh, Don pulled up the message translation of second Corinthians 12 and, you know, talking about Paul, what you see here is a transform, transformative time in Paul's life. You know, it, it, there was a transformation taking place there. He left something behind and he picked up something new. And that was his perspective on what was happening. Because nothing changed. The circumstance didn't change. What changed was how he saw it. What changed was how he received it. And so he left the person. You see, if you see what he says here, uh, you know, going up to verse seven and 10, uh, seven through 10, and he says, you know, because of the extravagance of the revelation, because of who he was destined to be in this history of Christianity, he says that I was given the gift of a handicap. Now, but he admits a few lines down, I did not see it as a gift. At first, it was all of the things that were tormenting me. 
And that's all I saw it as. What was tormenting me? And it says that Satan's angels did, did his best to get me down. What he in fact did was push me to my knees. And so he's describing an experience here of going through so much torment, so much pain, so much anguish, so many different these circumstances that he comes before God in this place of why God, because he says, I beg God to take this away. Lord, change this circumstance. Lord, get me out. Lord, make this different. Right. So he's 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 begging because he sees the circumstance as the issue and he get, he was in agreement with the negativity of the issue. But he said that gift, even, even as I came to my knees and, and was in agreement with what Satan's angel was doing to me, God showed me in a transformative moment, he spoke one word and that was enough. I am enough. Now Paul gets to shed the skin of the one who's in agreement with the negativity of the circumstance. And now that that's experience, which didn't leave, but it became nourishment for him to better see God, to better see what was happening. Now he has transformed. Now he's become a new person that looks and says, this was such an awesome lesson that it doesn't, I don't have to bear all of this. Now I become the strongest person in the room because I'm the weakest. And wow, I'm a new man. I don't even know what it looks like to see those circumstances any differently now. I don't even know how to look at it as anything other than a precious gift. You see, and so when God, that, that's the very picture of what he's doing with us as he pulls us forward, is he's saying, look, you can step out of agreement with those things, those places that you feel you want to park at, because every time I get to that, if I get to those places, I have to ask myself, why do you want to hold on to that? Why do you want to stay here? And that lets me know Satan, Satan's angel is doing his best to keep me right there. But in fact, all he did was when I had the, now have the presence of mind rather than to sit there, but have the presence of mind to say, to question, to say, why, are you, why do you want to be here? Why will you not let go? of this circumstance, of this, how you feel about it, of your emotions about it. Why won't you let go of that? Why do you want to hang on to that? Well, in my right mind, I wouldn't. So guess what? That means I agreed somebody somewhere. And I chose to accept whatever it is, the perspective, whatever it is Satan wanted me to have. So regardless of whether the circumstance changed, I can step out of that agreement. And just as we step out and shed that skin, it becomes now nourishment. And then I have no more, I, I can't even understand how I ever felt that way. <laughs> I have no reference point for that level of frustration, for that level of doubt, for, because it's, it doesn't exist anymore, it's gone. It became my fuel, you see? So, man, I know that was, you know, a whole nother moment inside of a moment, but I, I, I really I understand now this is what God had to kind of, to, to kind of undergird what it is that you brought for us today, Dre. And, you know, it was just phenomenal as always. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And uh, thank you, everybody. Comments. Praise God. Indeed. Uh, just to piggyback one last thing off of what you were saying, Jacinta. It's funny. 
you know, a lot of times I'll say to newer people that I meet or newer people that I know, um, like, yeah, man, dude, if you the knew the old Dre, like the, the Dre that never smiled, the Dre that, you know, never did, did, did you wouldn't believe it. Like you, you wouldn't believe. It. And I laugh about it now because I don't really believe it. I'm just grateful that that guy got a chance to grow up. And, you know, although that guy is still growing, I'm just grateful that, you know, God never, he, he never gave up. And, and regardless of who I was then, who I am now, who I'm going to become, as I'm becoming, he, he's still God. And, and he still, he still loves all of us. And, and he still, he still wants to put more and more and more in every one of us. So. I'm I'm just I'm grateful. I'm grateful for for everybody's words. I'm grateful for every opportunity I get to speak and every opportunity I get to be in the presence, you know, of, of you guys, whether I'm running across the stage or not, whether I'm, you know, whatever. I just like I just love being around you guys because it's it's bigger than it's bigger than what's in front of us. It's more than what's in front of us. It's greater than what's in front of us. There, there's there's a greater purpose than what we're in right now um, that God has for each and every one of us individually and collectively. So thank you guys again. Thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, making my way through tears of joy at what God has done and continues to do as we are evolving mm -hmm. and becoming what God intended us to become. And when he said to us, be fruitful and multiply, go become yourself. I'm reminded that even though Paul was describing his place of torment, he did that until he embraced the gift of the assignment of the gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, in our humanness, look at weakness um, we define it as a limitation on our wisdom, power, holiness, and all of that. But that comes from being human. Um, but that's the humanity side of us. But the spiritual side of us is what you discussed today. And I'm so glad that as we continue in our faith and in our oneness, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, right? As we continue in that, we can see that. Yeah, because we've been given the, the power to reason. We can reason in our mind all of these things and have this setup of the anger and the hopelessness and the depression and the, all that stuff and the feelings of that. But those are gifts, as you said, that cause us to come to our knees in prayer. It reminds us that we need to realign. It reminds us that we can see the prism differently that we can put that thing in reverse or like Stacy said, plow through it. It's a gift where there's sorrow and pain, there's sunshine, right? There are always the, both the sides of our experience. And if you look at a coin, it's a, the face and the back of it, but there's the rim, the thing that in, with Jesus in the midst that we are, He's expressing himself as himself through us. And you did that so wonderfully this morning that in the midst of whatever it is we are attracting to ourselves, God has allowed whatever the pressure is to get the essence of who he is in us out of us so that again, we can be a blessing to each other and to the world. I'm so grateful this morning, just sent to your right. I saw that in Stacy, and I just, I just couldn't help but just give God the glory for it because he stepped into, he stepped into and stood in his greatness in the spirit and let that be known as a way of affirming and connecting and then embracing and now the brotherhood. And God only knows how wonderful all of that's gonna be. And Pastor Don, 
the catalyst to acknowledge the kings on the call. In this era where queens are reigning, and we should, when I think of Proverb 31, it is the king who is speaking. And he's speaking what he learned sitting at the feet of his mother, who is also present in that scripture. And he's talking to the people in the neighborhood, to the sons of God, and instructing them in the right way. And he uplifts his wife his queen, as he talks about her, how he has released her. And their children are present. And it says that because of this rightness of relationship, they rise up and call her blessed. And at the end, it says, then he takes his seat at the gate of authority where the elders, including his father, sat. And it's a picture of a complete family. So no matter whether we had a fathers in the home or not, the king of kings is speaking to the sons of God. And when he says sons, he's not talking about gender. The spirit is no gender. And I'm reminded to come back even to something that I heard where people think that women were not in battle. Well, then who was Deborah? Who was JL? They were warriors. King Barak said, I'm not going unless you go. So there are things that have been obscured from our view as far as a preponderance of evidence that may be in scripture. Yet God has chosen the woman who opened the alabaster box. No name. They suspect who it might have been, but it was a woman. He also talks about Shamgar with, a, with just the jawbone of a donkey beat 10,000 down. He comes in and he disappears. So it doesn't have to be a whole lot of things that we do that bring glory to God. But the one thing that he gave us to do, some would see the jawbone as a limitation. It was not. It was a tool. So we are all beautiful arrows in the hand of our King and our God. And we are in his quiver. And even though when he pulls that thing back, we may feel like we've been pulled back, but he's aiming. And when he lets go, we don't miss our time. We didn't just went, we're sent. Amen. 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 <laughs> Woo. well god did that today <laughs> he did that today <laughs> always so just sent to mm -hmm. since uh dre was supposed to go tomorrow does that mean jessica is going to be the speaker <laughs> thank you jess <laughs> Let's you go, even yeah. start with me. I know. Let me stop start this recording because I don't know what's going to come out what she's going to say after that. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow and Thursday and uh, we will. Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm um, I, I'm loving everything the Lord is doing. And I, I pray that you are sensing. And if you if you are not, you know, um, let the Lord speak to you throughout today. And um, because I, I pray that you're sensing that shift, there there is a there's a new level, there's a new rise, there's a a a new mantle he has laid upon us all, and um, we must be a, we need to be aware and be ready to respond. That's all responsibility is. Our responsibility is our ability to respond. To what he is doing and um and so you know as we leave today just you know ask the question and it's not that you know a lot of times god will answer things there's times where you know he just i i ask the question i write it down and i go on about my day 
And sometime throughout the day, he whispers something. He says something. You know, there's a moment that I experience something someone says or does or whatever, and um, and he'll whisper the answer. But I I, I ask you today because he said I'm going to ask you to leave some things behind, and I want you to listen out for what that is because it is also. It, you know, as I spoke earlier, it may not be just a particular experience, but it may be your agreement with something that no longer serves you in this new place. It may be that 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 you've stayed into some level of your skin for too long. And it's time for you to move forward. So ask him what that is, because I believe he wants to release something to you. And I I promise you, when you hear that and you make your declaration to step away from it, you will feel the newness of yourself. And now that, enla that enlarges you. Because remember, it's a growth process to let go. It enlarges you, expands you, allows you to, to take more territory. So, um, He's being very strategic right now. He's been talking to me a lot about strategy. Um, so it, it's important that we respond accordingly. All right. Can I say, can I say something? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I know Jacinta said before that, um, you know, along this journey that accelerate would expand, that we would all have our own like accelerate. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really see that at first, mm -hmm. you know, but I feel it now. Mm -hmm. And I just want to let you know that, Jacinta. Amen. I can see that and I can, I feel it. that Amen. expansion of Accelerate. Yeah. yeah, I do too. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that because I do, I really feel like he's, this is about to come to another level. I, I don't know what it looks like just yet, but it is this this call in particular. Um, so I'm ready for it. I'm here for all of it. So thank you though for saying that, Crystal, because I I, I feel that too. Amen. Amen. I, it's I'm gonna stop recording right here. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's.